Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat about what is happening here in Spain. We'll go into the newspapers, check out what is happening there, and then at the end of the video we'll go into the comments section and take a look at some of the comments left on yesterday's video. Plenty of news around today, but unfortunately not a lot of good news because as we know here in Spain, case numbers are again on the rise, especially among the younger generations. And that is leading some people to think that maybe politicians will announce new restrictions in coming days days or weeks, similar to what they are doing in some parts of Portugal, where they again have nightly curfews and restrictions on mobility in some municipalities, especially in the big cities there. Now let's go into the news and the topic of COVID digital passports is making headlines again today, but not the official COVID passports. Apparently there are also counterfeit versions of this passport available. And as we can see from this headline, the falsification of COVID passports has risen 500% on the dark web. So there we go. If you're looking to get your hands on a fake COVID digital passport, the dark web is the place to go. And it's amazing just how quickly these cyber criminals work, considering that the official COVID digital certificate has only been in place since the 1st of July. But what can we expect? Because as we know, demand creates opportunities. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, COVID cases here in Spain are on the rise again, especially among people between the ages of 15 and 29. We saw yesterday that two autonomous communities here in Spain, Catalonia and Cantabria, have experienced huge spikes in cases in recent times, and Cantabria has again closed nightlife in 16 municipalities, including the capital Santander. And other autonomous communities here in Spain, for example, Galicia and Castilla Leon, are also talking about bringing back more restrictions when it comes to nightlife. And as we can see from this headline, the increase in cases among the younger generations is starting to put pressure on primary health care. So primary health care in some autonomous communities here in Spain starting to feel the pressure because of the increase in cases, but luckily it is not being reflected in the hospital system yet, and hopefully it will stay that way. Now the subject of international tourism here in Spain this summer is again making headlines, and the tourism minister, Reyes Maroto, is still confident that Spain can recover half of the lost international tourism this year. So the tourism minister there is still optimistic that international tourists will want to visit Spain this year, and she still thinks that Spain is going to receive some 45 million international visitors this year. But as we know, various countries still have mainland Spain on their list of unsafe travel destinations this year, for example Germany, and I think the Netherlands as well. So I I think the tourism minister is a little too optimistic if she expects 45 million people to come to Spain this year. I could be wrong, and let's hope that I am. Now on the subject of politics here in Spain, a new survey published in the newspaper El Mundo shows that the opposition party here in Spain, the Partido Popular, would win the next elections and would almost get an absolute majority with the help of Vox. So according to that survey, the current government's time in power is nearly up. People obviously fed up with the way that the Sanchez government has handled the crisis for the last 18 months or so and would rather have a right-wing coalition with the Partido Popular and Vox than a left-wing coalition with the Socialist government and Podemos. And also I imagine that a lot of El Mundo readers are not happy that the government pardoned those Catalonian independence leaders a couple of weeks ago, and that is no doubt reflected in that survey. Now another piece of news that caught my attention this morning was in the English version of El País, and it's about the bilingual school system here in Spain, and a lot of schools don't think that it is working. As we can see from the headline here, the Spanish schools dropping out of bilingual education programs. It's a sham, someone said. Nearly 90 primary and secondary centres are no longer teaching courses in English because they say students learn neither the language nor the subject matter properly. One educator believes that Spain's bilingual education program has significant shortcomings. One of the big problems he sees is that both the vocabulary and the grammar in the science books are more advanced than what students are learning in their regular English language class. This means that kids have trouble understanding what they are reading, and in the end they just memorize the words without really grasping the content. So is this the beginning of the end for the bilingual education program here in Spain? Teachers complaining that kids don't learn the language or the subject matter properly. So again, it looks like the education system here in Spain has got it wrong when it comes to bilingual education. A lot of people thought that this was going to be the solution to Spain's problems when it comes to second language learning, whether it's English, French, or any other second language. But as we can see here, quite a few schools dropping out of the program. My son goes to one of these bilingual schools, and I must admit that it's not easy for him to learn science in English. And that's with an English-speaking father, so imagine what it's like for kids that don't have that advantage. Now let's leave the news there and go into the comment section. We'll have a look at this one here from Larry. By the way, Stuart, on a more pleasant note, I love your garden. So verdant and lush with all sorts of plants. 
I'm sure you were worried after the January snowstorm, but the plants sure made a remarkable comeback. Nature is much hardier than we sometimes give it credit for. Yeah, Larry, thanks for the comment, and you're right, I was worried about the garden after that snowstorm earlier in the year. I was worried that the garden wouldn't grow back, that half of the plants had been destroyed by the cold temperatures. Remember that the snow was very, very heavy and everything was frozen for about two weeks afterwards. But as you can see, a lot of plants are survivors and they have recovered quite nicely with the warmer temperatures. And the snowstorm was actually a blessing in disguise because it made me cut back some of the heavy growth that I had there. And I actually prefer what the garden looks like now. It's a lot more open and more accessible. One here from Ain Ho, and the subject of working longer, while some professions are able to continue well into their late 60s, spare a thought for the more physical jobs. Not everyone sits on their butts all day. Back in the UK, I was a post lady for 30 years. Early morning start, six days a week, hardly ever a break. Out all day, nowhere to take a break or even use the toilet. Walking up to 17 kilometres a day in all weathers. I tell you I was physically worn out age 60. I'm retired now here in Spain and I feel so much better. I still exercise, but it's definitely taken its toll on my joints. I'm 65 now and still have to wait until next year for my government pension. People forget we started work the majority of my age group when we left school at 15. We've worked blooming hard. Love listening to you, Stu. And yes, show us your garden. I'm nosy. Paula. Yeah, Paula, thanks for the comment, and don't worry, a garden tour is on my agenda. And you're right, a lot of professions do take their toll on people's health and well-being. The one that you pointed out there, being a postie, having to walk up to 17 kilometres a day in all types of weather, and doing it for 30 years, I'm not surprised that you are physically worn out. Not everybody can have a cushy office job sitting down on their butts all day, as you point out there, using nothing more than their brains and their fingers to type on a keyboard. And I often wonder at what age people retire that work in very physically demanding jobs, for example, brick layers and other people that work on construction sites. So if you do have quite a physical job and you're being told by the government that perhaps you're going to have to work longer, I can imagine that some people are going to be upset with that. One here from Gyroscopic, Ola Stewart, my husband and I watch your videos every day and we enjoy your matter of fact reporting on events in Spain and Portugal. We are planning a trip for, hopefully next year, and using some of your older travel videos as guides in our planning. Thank you for the hard work you put into your work. As for the garden, I would love a detailed walkthrough, maybe with naming each of the plants you have. It looks like such a lovely spot to enjoy on a good day. Is your garden representative of a typical Spanish terrace or patio garden, or is this garden truly your creation? Thanks again, and all the best from two of your fans in Berkeley, California. Yeah, hi guys, and thanks for the comment. I don't really know if my garden is representative of other Spanish gardens, or at least in this part of Spain. If you have a look on Google Maps, you can see that not a lot of people have gardens. A lot of people have a pool, maybe a few plants, maybe some type of grass. There is a lot of patios, but not a lot of people have a garden similar to this one, or at least not many people that I know. For example, the neighbors on this side, that side, and behind me don't really have any plants at all. They have a pool, they have a patio area, but when it comes to plants, zero. And I think that's because a lot of people here don't want to have the hassle that is associated with having a garden. As we know, a lot of hard work goes into a garden. You have to spend a lot of time there, a lot of hard physical work sometimes, and people don't seem to want to have to deal with that. In fact, the guy behind me here, at every opportunity he gets, he cuts back my trees, and he even once complained that I had too much vegetation. So that's what I'm dealing with here. And also good to see that you guys are going back and watching some of those older travel videos that I have done in the past for planning your trip to Spain. And I've got some more travel videos coming out later this month, so hopefully those videos will also help you with your planning. One here from Wickler Walker. I live in a tourist area of Ireland and really miss tourists around town. They make us appreciate the beauty we are surrounded by. I hope that most Spaniards feel the same. Enjoy people enjoying your country. Yeah, Wickler, thanks for the comment. We mentioned this yesterday that before the pandemic, various anti-tourism groups popped up around the country, especially in some of the more tourist-heavy areas. For example, Mallorca and the Balearic Islands, Catalonia, and other places around the country where there is a lot of tourism. And you would quite often see graffiti with the slogan, tourists go home. And I think those groups arose because there were just too many tourists in some areas. For example, as I said before, cities like Barcelona, and they complained that prices were going up. It was difficult to find a place to rent because all of the normal accommodation was being turned into tourist flats. But obviously that situation has changed since the pandemic hit. Those groups are not as prominent now as they were before. And a lot of people that I know want tourism to come back because they're proud that Spain is such a famous international tourist destination. If so many people want to visit the country, there must be something fairly good about it. So we'll see if the tourism sector recovers in coming years and we'll see if these anti-tourist groups resurface. One here from Terry, what am I going to do if Spain end up playing England in the final? 
we don't think this will happen as Spain are not looking like they're going to knock out Italy unless they pull their socks up. Yeah, Terry, thanks for the comment. And that is the big hurdle that the Spanish football team now faces, Italy in the semi-finals. And my family, for one, are not confident that Spain is going to be able to beat them. But imagine if they do get through and England also gets through and we have a Spain-England final. And I'm sure that there's a lot of England supporters out there that would love to see that. And finally, one here from Matthew, just spent two weeks in Javier, fantastic weather, went for an antigen test at the medical center in Javier, very friendly and quick, in and out in five minutes, all the restaurant staff and shop staff so friendly as usual. Yeah, Matthew, thanks for the comment and good to see that you enjoyed your holiday down there in Alicante. And the weather down there at this time of the year always seems to be fantastic. It always seems to be sunny, always seems to be a nice temperature. And that is the attraction of that part of Spain for a lot of people. As you all know, I recently spent a few days in that part of Spain and I also found people down there working in bars and restaurants very, very friendly and helpful. And a lot of people in that sector happy to be working again. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below debate the situation out as you normally do give it a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if you didn't i'll see you in the next one hasta luego